Okay, uh, my name's Shane. I'm 41 years old. Uh, I'm a Capricorn. Uh, I was born in Melbourne, but I grew up in uh, regional Victoria. Uh, but I've been back in Melbourne now for the past eight years. Growing up, uh, where I was treated differently and where I faced discrimination mostly was at school. Uh, so uh, primary school, I remember feeling um, just different. So I was uh, highlighted and teased just for being different, for, uh, for, for being a boy who never got dirty, for being a boy who never played sport, for being a boy who hung out with the girls instead of the boys. Um, so I, I, I learned from an early age that I, I wasn't like other boys. Uh, and then high school came along and uh, things just intensified. So uh, then uh, uh, the abuse was targeted at my sexuality or my, you know, I was very young, but you know, what was apparent to everyone else but myself. Um, so yeah, so, uh, so uh, daily, daily abuse, um, uh, I felt very exposed, very vulnerable. So just walking from class to class uh, was terrifying in itself. I found myself uh, hiding in the library during lunch breaks, recess, uh, anywhere where I could just get away from the uh, attention of others. Uh, I remember um, I used to catch uh, the school bus and um, it was a 20 minute ride. Uh, and I was terrified about getting onto this bus because uh, mine was the last stop before getting to school. So if you got on there, if you weren't quick enough, you ended up lining up down the corridor. And if you were down the back of the line especially, you were just uh, exposed to so much teasing. It was, it was a very vulnerable place to, to be. And I remember feeling quite sick in the stomach before school. Uh, I remember counting down the minutes even, thinking, okay, in five minutes time, I'm gonna be on that bus again. Uh, and then also coming home, just remembering the afternoon, just watching that clock and watching it tick away. So I guess growing up, um, yeah, I just felt that there was something very wrong with me, that, that, that I just, uh, the very fact that I was me uh, just provoked such a, um, a, a hostile uh, reaction from other people. Um, and yeah, it, it wasn't so great for my self-confidence. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my early working career, um, I became uh, a people pleaser because I kind of felt that, well, if I'm um, attracting such, such hatred towards me, what can I do to, to lessen that? So I, I was, you know, the ultimate people pleaser, you know, to be as nice as I could, to be as polite as I could. Um, other people's needs were more important than my own. The older I got, uh, the more anxious I became. Uh, and um, I think what took me by surprise is that, you know, growing up to everyone who, who looked at me, I was quite a happy person. I had you know, the smile on my face, I was polite, um, I never expressed anger, I never expressed um, hurt feelings. So, so uh, when I had um, torturous days at, at school, um, I never cried, I never shared it with anyone, I kept it uh, to myself. And so, uh, so yeah, I, I found the, the older I got, the, the more anxious I became just about life in general. I felt that, uh, I felt that every day, had the possibility of presenting something really quite hurtful to me because that was my experience. So even as an adult, going into a workplace or walking down the street or, you know, I just had this, I guess it was an irrational fear of, of being hurt. You know, I look at photos of myself now, um, so when, photos of myself when I was younger and, and I was always happy. I had this painted smile on my face, um, but I remember how I felt. Um, so, to, so to think that depression had come along was so, so extreme to me. I thought that that's not me. I'm not an unhappy person, um, but I was. I was very unhappy. So, uh, so it just it just snowballed along, and yeah. By the time I reached my late thirties, um, yeah, it brought me to my knees. I, I became that person who got up in the morning, not feeling so great, had a shower, jumped on the tram, got to work, and uh, couldn't step in the the, um, the office building because I was in tears and I was just uh, racked with anxiety and, uh, you know, having to call my boss from downstairs saying, I'm so sorry, I just can't come in. Um, and even now it's really hard to believe that that was me, um, but it was. So in my early 20s, I met my first boyfriend and um, started a relationship and that, that was wonderful. So uh, being able to, uh, to have someone in front of me to say that this is who I am and this is who I love, I was able to, uh, to come out to family and friends and I, and I had this hit list and I just went through and you know, told everyone I could and, uh, you know, went to Mardi Gras and, and I was open at work and, you know, I, I, um, I didn't hide it. But at the same time, um, I still didn't like myself. I still hated myself. And so um, I eventually, it, feeling that way eventually led me to seeking counselling. 
and I, I've had counselling now for 12 years and it's only now in the past year or two that I, I actually like myself. Um, I bought two Jack Russells and they were amazing. I think they've been the best, the best medicine for me. I've never had pets before and so to have two beautiful little Jack Russells that, that need me and, and need to be walked which in turn you know allows me to get some exercise and some fresh air and uh, yeah that's just been amazing. Um, Exercise as well, I started exercising. I um, put on 30 kilos during my 20s and 30s, and so uh, I really needed to get on top of my um, physical self, which I did, so that was a very slow and gradual process, but that was great, and um, just started eating better as well, so I found the combination of all those things uh, worked really well. Um, what I would say to the teenage version of me is that um, you're okay, you are so okay and uh, you will be okay and uh, you, you will be surrounded by family and friends who love you for you. Uh, you, will, uh, you will have happy days. Um, school won't always be a lot of fun, um, but school isn't forever and, um, and it's okay to be you and you are so, so, so okay. Um, I, I think what I would like to see change in the world uh, is, that, is that whole notion of choice. You know, I can't believe that uh, people still think it's a choice, that parents still look at their gay sons or daughters and think, you've chosen this lifestyle. I would love to see more education around that, just um, people being more accepting, more loving, and um, it makes the world a better place. You have gay people in the world, it's great.